there is some big breaking news which is coming in. Remember, there's been a two-month-long standoff between India and China, a dock law. And what we've got is that latest information that's come in from the Ministry of External Affairs who have said that the process of disengagement has actually been reached. And what we've been given to understand that the troops, the Indian and the Chinese troops, who were locked in this standoff at Doklam, may slowly begin to pull back. This is the latest that we are getting in. And for more on this, we are joined in by my colleague Ramesh Ramachandran. Ramesh, what more information do we have on this? Uh, indeed. First things first, uh, Mohammed, I can just read out the very brief statement put out by the Indian Foreign Ministry. And I quote them here. It says, in recent weeks, India and China have maintained diplomatic communication in respect of the incident at Doklam. During these communications, we were able to express our views and convey our concerns and interests. On this basis, expeditious disengagement of border personnel at the face of site at Doklam has been agreed to and is ongoing. So that's the brief statement put out by the Indian Foreign Ministry just a short while ago. And that, to my mind, indicates that uh, the process of disengagement has been agreed to and one can expect some kind of a reconciliation or uh, a de-escalation of situation on the Doklam Plateau in the days to come. You know, this, this is big breaking news that we've just got. It is the Ministry of External Affairs that's put out this statement. And also, what does this effectively mean, Ramesh? Because this is something, you know, that... that uh, was an incident that was said that could actually take the two giants, India and China, virtually to war. So now are we seeing that this is a scenario where Doklam, where both India and China have agreed that, look, we will just pull back. What, what exactly is likely to happen here? Well, Mohammed, while the exact details of this so-called uh, disengagement is to be fleshed out, uh, we'll get back to you on this uh, shortly. But on the face of it, it's been more than two months now, Mohammed, since the mm -hmm. standoff happened on the Doklam Plateau on the 16th of June. So, as I said, it's been more than two months now. And this comes barely days ahead of Prime Minister Modi's scheduled visit to uh, China for the 9th BRICS summit. So, uh, this, is a, this is nothing short of a major, major departure your announcement uh, on the situation obtaining on the door clamp battle even as we speak but also it does appear to be a big climb down on the part of China. Remember, China was adamant, stating that Doklam Plateau is essentially disputed territory and it has rights over it. China was making very belligerent noises. The kind of media coverage that Doklam got in China, you know, it's difficult to, uh, to, to believe that there was any other incident with the Chinese media covered in this manner in the last four decades. Does this now mean that China accepts that it had crossed the line and was trying to construct a road in what was effectively Bhutanese territory. Indeed, and that's the sense uh, one gets as well, Mohammed. Remember, India had consistently argued and maintained that it is for a resolution can happen only when simultaneous withdrawal of uh, mm -hmm. Indian and Chinese troops from the Doklam Plateau. Remember, Doklam is considered as Bhutanese territory, but China claims Doklam as its own. Mm -hmm. And we've seen a heightened rhetoric from official officials in China and also the official Chinese media, for that matter, a very heightened rhetoric in the last few weeks uh, calling for escalation of, of, of tensions uh, mm -hmm. and also a war cry, as it were, between India and China. But to my mind, this statement is very important, very significant, no doubt. And the exact details are still be fleshed out. But the fact remains that the expeditious disengagement would convey that both sides would, right. would pull out their troops from where they are at the moment on the Doklam Plateau. And also, Ramesh, you know, persisting a bit more in terms of military engagement, the Doklam standoff was not a very big one. Either side had having this eyeball-to-eyeball -eyeball confrontation at Doklam. But the manner in which China was playing its hand, for instance, we saw what happened uh, in the Pangongso Lake region. We also what happened near Uttarakhand, where we had these Chinese soldiers who were, in, uh, who were making incursions into Chinese territory. So with this, has India called the Dragon's Bluff and has India's stand been vindicated in this case? Clearly, Mohammed, this is a vindication and of, of India's position, no doubt. Also, at the same time, this is a culmination of India's hard-nosed negotiations behind the scenes. Remember, mm -hmm. Mohammed, Prime Minister Modi is still to officially announce his visit to the BRICS summit. Right. And to my mind, both sides were negotiating for this, this statement, uh, the formulation of this statement in, in the preceding days to pave the way for Prime Minister Modi's visit to the BRICS summit in China. 
and to that extent this is no no less significant that both sides have agreed to on the face of it for a expeditious disengagement of border personnel from the site on the Doklam plateau and also that both sides have agreed to and the process is ongoing as we speak. And has, have you got any information as to how China has reacted to this? Because it is the Ministry of External Affairs in India which has said that there is a mutual de disengagement, effectively saying that the troops on either side will move back. Because this was the stated Indian stand that either side should pull back its troops by, you know, roughly 250 meters on their side of the, the sides of the border. But China, for its part, has been saying that it is only the Indian troops who should pull back. But in this case, now what appears to have happened is that both sides, both India and China, are pulling their troops back. What more information have we got on this? What, what does it mean in this case? Is China not interested in this conflict? What's, what's happening here, Ramesh? This is very surprising considering the fact because China was saying that this is not going to be taken very lightly. It is the reputation of the President Xi Jinping that is virtually on the line here. Well, clearly a couple of things one can infer very safely at this point in time, Mohammed. One, it's a vindication of India's position, number one. Number two, it is no less a diplomatic victory for India. Remember, Sushma Swaraj, the foreign minister of India, had said on the floor of the House in, of India's parliament that the only way forward can be simultaneous withdrawal from the Doklam plateau by both troops, from Indian and Chinese troops, and that uh, diplomatic options are available and should continue to be used. So clearly... There have been a lot of behind-the-scenes negotiations as we speak, and uh, this is the culmination of weeks of negotiations behind the scenes, back-channel talks, especially which was started when uh, National Security Advisor Ajit Doval visited uh, Beijing for the BRICS preparatory meeting a few weeks ago. So things were happening behind the scenes, uh, not to the knowledge of the media on either side. But this statement uh, you know, gives an indication of the amount of diplomatic maneuver that's been happening behind the scenes as we speak, and to be able for both sides to come to this agreement mm -hmm. of an expeditious disengagement from where they are, the respective positions on the Doklam plateau as we speak. Absolutely indeed. Now do continue to stay on with us, uh, Ramesh. We are also joined by Madhav Nalapat is what I'm being told. Uh, Mr. Nalapat, this is the latest that we've got that both sides have decided to disengage at the Doklam plateau. How do you read this development? Well, it's a very welcome development, and as you know, the BRICS summit is taking place in Xiamen on the 3rd. Mm -hmm. So India is a very, very important component of BRICS. I mean, India and China together have about 2.5 billion people on the globe. Mm -hmm. So uh, Prime Minister Modi's presence in BRICS would be a great boost to the summit. So quite clearly, if this kind of a, uh, if the disengagement does take place, and there is a mutually agreed a situation of de-escalation of hostilities, then that is going to have a very good effect on the BRIC summit. And also, Mr. Nalapath, according to your assessment, what do you think has brought about this change? What has made China climb down from its position, earlier stated position, that it is only India that should withdraw from Doklam while China was actually on its territory? What do you think has brought about this change on the part of the Chinese? Well, you know, I'd like to say that uh, you know we shouldn't uh, overestimate individual uh, uh, groups in India or China giving the individual opinion, mm -hmm. some very hawkish and some not so very, very hawkish. Uh, the, the fact of the matter is that China is basically the, the top, there is one, you know, the Xi Jinping mm -hmm. is, the, is the president of, of China and the leader of the party. Mm -hmm. Now, it's not the army, it's not the civil establishment, it's Xi Jinping. And mm -hmm. uh, a decision will be finally taken by him. I have always been reasonably confident that Xi Jinping will look at the importance of a close relationship with India, importance in terms of geopolitics, right. importance in terms of geoeconomics, and thereby ensure that the hawks in his establishment are faced down. And I'm sure Prime Minister Modi is strong enough to face down the hawks in his establishment. Frankly, neither China or India will be the winners if, they, if there is a war between them. Absolutely. Third parties will be the winners. Mm -hmm. And also, do you think this present development is going to be a paradigmatic shift in the way the border dispute with China will be played out? Because China was very belligerent. It was insisting that Doklam Plateau belonged to it. But India stepped in and said that what it was doing was effectively infringing on the sovereignty of Bhutan. 
which has an agreement with India in terms of defense. So do you think now the Indo-China border dispute will actually head into a new direction from here? Well, I'd like to point out that thanks to pressure from the Pakistan army, the Chinese army has been resisting, frankly, a settlement of the border dispute and ensuring that the border is effectively demarcated. Mm -hmm. At least the line of control, actual control is demarcated. Now I think the Chinese have also understood. The, no, the line of actual control is, uh, Mr. Nalpat, the line of actual control is demarcated, but China does not agree to that because it says that the line was drawn at a time when they were weak. It was drawn by the imperial forces of the British, and they do not respect that line. This is the stated position of the Chinese. Look, that they have accepted that line in the case of Myanmar. They have accepted the lines in the case of Russia, and they can as well accept in the case of India. The fact of the matter is that it would be to their advantage if this is settled for the simple reason that India becomes one of the biggest potential markets for China in mm -hmm. the future. And China has also will become a very important business and commercial partner of India. Mm -hmm. So hopefully the Chinese will understand the danger of looking at India through the Pakistan army's lens. Right. Mr. Nalpa, do continue to stay on with us. We are, meanwhile, I'm told that we are also joined in from Beijing, Mr. Aina Tangan, who is a China affairs expert. Uh, Mr. Tangan, this is a statement that has been released by the Ministry of External Affairs in India, which says that both sides will mutually disengage. That is to say, the troops will be pulled out by either side. How do you read this development, Mr. Tangan? Well, I think this is a very positive thing that uh, shows China's great respect for uh, Prime Minister Modi and the work that he's doing in India. I think, you know, as has been said in 2013 by Xi Jinping, the relationship between China and India could redefine the world. Mm -hmm. You have two of the largest markets. You have compatible markets with uh, China having a declining uh, working population and India having 60 percent of its occupants under uh, 30. So with these kind of statistics, it makes sense for these uh, age-old civilization states to come together. And I mm -hmm. think this is what is necessary. This is the rational approach. I think it's not important to blame each other. The question is, how do you go forward from here? Will right. this signal a broader uh, engagement in the Belt and Road Initiative? Will there be some movement on um, the nuclear suppliers group? So I think there's things to be gained from both sides. Right. Uh, so you're hailing this as an important and a rational move. And also, I'm being told that we are also joined by Mr. Jadev. Ranade, who's also a strategic affairs expert. Uh, Mr. Ranade, how do you view this development where both India and China have decided to disengage at Doklam? Do you welcome this? And also, what does it do to China's stand, which for the last two months had been very belligerent? Has China in some ways lost its face in this conflict? Well, it's a welcome development. It's mm -hmm. certainly something that we've been hoping will happen. But uh, having said that, let me just say that it's uh, premature. Mm -hmm to really expect that things will come back to what they were earlier. We'll have to wait and see how China behaves. Mm -hmm. And also, whatever propaganda offensive China had mounted, it will stay in people's memories for quite some time. Mm -hmm. So it will be, shall I describe it as a cautious but positive first step. A cautious, positive, and a welcome disengagement is how you have put yes. it. And also, uh, do continue to stay on with us. Uh, let me go back to Mr. Aina Tangan here. Uh, Mr. Tangan, you know, there were several things that were playing out in this conflict. It is in Doklam, which, which is in the tri-junction of India, Bhutan, and, 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 and China, that this conflict actually played out. But the ramifications of this were much bigger. You know, there were people who were saying that China, which is trying to project itself as a global power, which has always been insisting on a peaceful rise of China, is perhaps hardening its stance. You know, it's trying to um, project its power in the South China Sea. And this is what we were seeing was also being carried out along the Indochina border as well. Do you see this as, as, as a sort of a reassessment by China in, in terms of what it can actually do along the Indian border? No, I, I don't see it that way, and I don't think it's necessary to view it. I think you should be looking at what the opportunities are between these two great civilization states. As I said before, this is a tremendous show of faith in Prime Minister Modi. I think the real work begins now mm -hmm. in terms of how you settle a number of the outstanding issues. 
Right. Uh, I have never heard anybody from India or China say that it is against their interest to cooperate. Absolutely. The two together could be a very, very important part of the world. So the question is, how do we go forward, not how do we look back and, and recriminate? This is also a very good indication that the Global Times does not set policy for uh, the Chinese government and that you shouldn't be looking always at the worst case scenarios or the, the soundings of the print. Right. Global Times does not set policies. What you've said, but a lot of people who have been watching developments would say that Global Times somehow indicates the policy which the Chinese administration actually has in mind. Do continue to stay on with us. Meanwhile, I'm also being told that we are joined by Mr. Swaran Singh, who is an expert on China affairs. Uh, Mr. Swaran Singh, how do you read this development? Do you think India should wholeheartedly accept this or do you think we need to be a little more cautious? Uh, definitely, we need to be cautious. But I think there were some indications coming already from uh, non-official academic uh, people in China that there was possibility of China relenting ultimately. Mm -hmm. But this, I think, also was a hope in India that since in last several years we have had incidents where ultimately we have managed to maturely, you know, calm down and then roll back. Mm -hmm. There was such a sentiment already in India, and I think this is likely to be the fact that now. The, the firm attitude of India has clearly been understood and appreciated. And plus, of course, uh, China has compulsions of the BRICS summit coming. Mm -hmm. And Indian Prime Minister not confirming whether Indian Prime Minister is joining that must have also worked as the leverage that India had. Mm -hmm. And in that sense, notice that change is clearly visible. Right. And also, do continue to stay on with us. I'm being told that my colleague Karthike Sharma has been waiting very patiently is on uh, has joined us as well. Uh, Kartikeya, this is, of course, a welcome move. What do you think has changed? You know, the Doklam crisis started two months back. What do you think has changed from since then to now that China has decided to, you know, unilaterally pull back along with India? See, there are a couple of th 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 three things. You know, on this, I had an opportunity to meet the foreign secretary. And when I caught up with him in parliament a month back and I asked him on Doklam, uh, Indian Foreign Secretary was very categorical and he said people forget the way we handled the standoff with China one and a half, two years back. And he said, do you remember when the standoff took place when UPN was power? Uh, it continued for more than five months mm -hmm. and even then we did not give in ultimately bo 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 both the countries disengaged. What, what what the Indian side, though details have not come out as to how who has pulled back, how much, how many troops from which side, how mm -hmm. many machines from which side, we are yet to get those details. Please understand, the last report, Saleh, you would remember was mm -hmm. roughly 80 to 90 troops from both sides, apart from a couple of road clearing machines. Now, mm -hmm. what has been the modicum of pullback is not known, but the intention and the declaration of MEA to say that it is an ongoing process and started says one thing that the BRICS meeting altogether in Beijing would mm -hmm. be a different affair now secondly and the perception that you know that the India might cave in give in uh, to the domestic audience uh, or the to the domestic political constituency message went very straight India did not give in to the the so-called the media belligerence I wouldn't use the word the belligerence on part of the government but the media belligerence in China the government did not give in there do you think the you know upcoming BRICS summit is, is the game changer here? Because on the 3rd till the 5th of September, we were expecting Prime Minister Modi. It was not very clear whether he, was, he would indeed go there. Uh, is that what has actually changed it for, for what has happened at Doklam? I, I don't see Doklam, Doklam eases of the tension. You know, it allows a lot of political elbow room. But there is already an alignment which has taken place and mm -hmm. a reaction which is part of a story bulletin, which is Russia. China and Pakistan, and Pakistan cancelling the meeting of the U.S. Uh, uh, Assistant Secretary of State who looks after South Asia. So that that alignment will remain. But mm -hmm. this is not only a BRICS summit. Uh, Prime Minister goes to China, and mm -hmm. then he goes to Myanmar. You know, mm -hmm. it's about the eastern border. It's also about India's look east politics. So what it does for the Prime Minister is that it eases off the tension. What it does in terms of his domestic politics is the message goes that he did not uh, step back. Mm -hmm. But I would again add a caveat. What, what was the modicum? How was this uh, logjam broken? Mm -hmm. Who called first? How many troops from both the sides? Mm -hmm. Is it complete withdrawal or partial withdrawal? Is, is machinery of that Doklam plateau or also the troops? How many troops from both the sides? Those details are not right. out. And, so, the, and I think the importance of the story lies in that 
Detail. You are saying that the details of this need to be looked at. You're being very cautious in, in welcoming this. Uh, meanwhile, we have Mr. Aynar Tangan, who continues to be with us from Beijing. Mr. Tangan, you know, the experts in India believe that this is, of course, a welcome move, but also they are saying that India still continues to remain cautious and vigilant. What is the mood in China? You know, how, how would the Xi Jinping administration view this entire standoff at Doklam? We saw the PLA celebrating its 90th anniversary and in many ways, if China were to appear soft in this Doklam standoff, would that affect Xi Jinping domestically in his politics? Well, uh, quite frankly, this is a very complex issue that will continue. The, the issues between uh, China's uh, economic expansion, its desire to have a belt and road and create a much larger economic sphere, uh, not just of influence, but of actual necessity. Remember, China is near the bottom, mm -hmm. around 100 in terms of resources per person. It cannot afford to be in a position mm -hmm. where resources cannot be brought into the country and right. value-added goods shipped out. So this is of crucial importance. They want very much to have India on board. Mm -hmm. These altercations are really just a, a sideline, an unpleasant part of what... Right. So you're essentially saying that, that it is business that needs to be the focus and these altercations along the border um, are, are, are a more aberration in the India-China relationship. Meanwhile, I am told that we, uh, Mr. Jaydev Ranade continues to be with us. Uh, Mr. Ranade, you know, when you look at the way in, this, in which this entire standoff at Doklam has played out, do you think this is a realization on the part of the Chinese that they actually stand to lose and considering the difficult kind of terrain and the tactical advantage which India enjoys at Doklam, a military victory may not have been that easily accessible for the Chinese. Is that the reason why perhaps China has made a reassessment? They are trying to use diplomacy. They are trying to use other means where, for instance, they've said that they would also be investing about $10 billion in Bhutan. Uh, do you think they are now trying to, you know, get, up to th get into this matter through different means rather than through a direct military conflict? Well, there are different facets to the tension around Doklam. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, one needs to look at all of them. But uh, just uh, in the initial first three, three or four points, let me just mention that uh, the Doklam incident Mm -hmm. uh, does indicate that uh, just military force is not going to get China what it wants. Okay. I think that message is clear. Mm -hmm. The second is that if we study the propaganda offensive that China mounted, mm -hmm. they said all kinds of things. And I think by withdrawing, by agreeing to withdraw, they've concluded that probably they have to use other means. Third is I think your reporter spoke about the alignments that are forming. These alignments, I would say, have been possibly accelerated to some extent by the Doklam issue. Right. And uh, it makes it clear that uh, people are not going to, at least in India, there is a new equilibrium that is being sought to be established between China and India. And uh, once China sort of accepts that mm -hmm. there is need for a new equilibrium, possibly mm -hmm. the relationship could be put on a smoother track. Mm -hmm. so I would say that at the moment, uh, in India at least, there will be caution. Mm -hmm. There will be a cautious welcome for this disengagement. Mm -hmm. But there will be no lowering of the guard from what I can see. Right. No lowering of the guard, but a cautious welcome of this disengagement at the Doklam Plateau. Meanwhile, we still have Mr. Madhav Nalapath, who has joined us on the Skype. Uh, Mr. Nalapath, how do you see things moving on from here? We saw what happened uh, immediately after the Doklam standoff. We saw incursions. For instance, in Chamoli district, we saw the Pangong So incident as well. China was looking more and more amateurish, especially the Pangong So incident baffled belief as to why a big power like China should engage in something like that. Uh, do you think China somehow now realizes that with India at least, which it had earlier always been treating as a smaller military power, that it cannot perhaps, you know, uh, run, run roughshod over India as they perhaps earlier believed that they could? Well, the fact is that uh, for a long time, uh, a, a lot of Chinese policy towards India, especially on the border, has basically been policy which has been suggested to it by the Pakistan military. 
the frankly the Chi the Americans for a long time mm -hmm. were prisoners of the Pakistan military where their policy to a lot of India was concerned and now unfortunately for some time the Chinese have also been doing what mm -hmm. the Pakistan military wants them to do and the entire standoff and the response to it frankly is in my view something which has has greatly pleased the Pakistan army. Now, clearly, this is not in China's interest. Mm -hmm. India is a big market, and it's mm -hmm. going to be a bigger market in future. Uh, Pakistan cannot replace India as a geopolitical global partner, whether it's BRICS, whether it's SCO, whether it's the UN, WTO, climate conference. There is no comparison between Pakistan and India in terms of geopolitical significance. So I think wiser counsel has prevailed in China, mm -hmm. and the PLA, I think, has been told very firmly that the fixation with Pakistan and with helping Pakistan of the PLA is harming the overall interest of China. If it is true that there is a mutual disengagement over Doklam, mm -hmm. it basically means that the Chinese leadership has asserted itself over the pro-Pakistan hawks in the PLA. Right, it is the Chinese leadership, which you say, which has asserted itself over the pro-Pakistan hawks within the PLA. Meanwhile, I'm told that we're also joined in by our senior editor, Surya Gangadharan, from our international desk. Uh, Surya, how do you view this development? Is, is this something, a clear reassessment, a re realignment in terms of how China looks at the subcontinent? Are they now, you know, perhaps led to believe that more, uh, you know, kind of having a fractious relationship with India is perhaps not in their good interest, especially for their business interests? Well, I think uh, there's been a lot of uh, deep thinking within the Chinese establishment over uh, the consequences of Doklam. Now, if you look at uh, some of the papers today, uh, there's talk of uh, Chinese expatriates leaving India, mm -hmm. especially those who are working for the Chinese cell phone makers, Oppo mm -hmm. and others, you know. So, um, it's a sense that um, the Chinese are very pragmatic people. They understand the value of business. And as mm -hmm. uh, the earlier guest remarked, uh, there's a huge market in India. They don't want to lose that. Uh, let's not forget that um, India has a trade deficit with China more than $50 billion. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's great figures for China at a time when its own economy is slowing down. So uh, uh, we are still not clear whether this is a mutual disengagement. The mm -hmm. MEA obviously is speaking on behalf of the Indian Army. Mm -hmm. I understand the Chinese Foreign Ministry is briefing at this point. Right. And we should get clarification whether this disengagement is actually uh, by both sides at the same time. This is something India had insisted upon. Mm -hmm. I don't presume we would have backed away from that. So it will be interesting to see what the Chinese are coming up with. Absolutely indeed. That, that's a point, important point that you've put out there. This is the Ministry of External Affairs statement that has been put out by the Indian side. It now remains to be seen as to what the Chinese actually have to say on this. Uh, Mr. Jaydev Ranade, if I could come to you on this. Uh, you know, this disengagement at Doklam, do you think this is a new direction in which the India-China relationship will go earlier? China had been back backing Pakistan. You know, China also made this very, very strange sort of an argument that if India can intervene in Doklam, then the Chinese troops could also intervene in Kashmir. This was something that was made by the very belligerent Chinese media. From that stand to now this climb down, do you think now the Chinese realize and understand that India economically is a much bigger benefit than what Pakistan can ever hope to be? Uh, certainly, <clears throat> let me make my last comment now. Mm -hmm. But uh, as far as Pakistan is concerned, I don't think it is as large a factor as is being made out. Let's not forget that the Chinese have made various threats, including reviving the insurgency in the Northeast, mm -hmm. creating trouble in Sikkim, etc. So the Pakistan factor is certainly there, but not the sole factor. Secondly, mm -hmm. I think the economy, the fact that they might lose the market in India, where pressure has already started being applied, mm -hmm. is uh, an important consideration for the Chinese. But also that as far as geopolitical linkages are concerned, India has far more friends than does China at the, uh, 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 in the world. And I think that would be another factor that China would have uh, factored in. But the bottom line, Mm -hmm. is that China has, India has not backed off under Chinese pressure. Mm -hmm. And I think that sends its own signals to other countries as well. Mm -hmm. And China would have taken that into account. Absolutely, indeed. India has not cracked under the Chinese pressure. And Ramesh, if I could come to you on this. You know, it was just 300 soldiers, 350 soldiers on either side at the Doklam Plateau who were there in this eyeball-to-eyeball -eyeball confrontation. But now, is this 
a reassessment and a realization on the part of China that a military conflict for the two nations is just seriously way too harmful and not something that they should pursue. Rather, the border disputes can actually be sorted off through dialogue. Is, is that what has happened here? Muhammad, very clearly, if you, if you parse the Indian Foreign Ministry statement for the text, subtext and the context, now the implications of the statement are very clear for everybody to see. And if I can just make a couple of points. One, as I said before, this is a vindication, a resounding vindication of India's position on the attempts by China to change the status quo, as it were, on the Doklam Plateau, number one. Number two, it is no less a diplomatic victory for India. Remember, India has consistently argued and maintained that all diplomatic channels remain open and shall continue to be used to resolve the situation on the Doklam Plateau. And that is exactly what we're seeing happening now in view of the statement issued by the Indian Foreign Ministry. And also, this development would not go unnoticed uh, among many of China's neighbors who are or may have been the receiving end of China's uh, bullying tactics, namely countries that share a maritime boundary with China in the South China Sea. Mm -hmm. And this will be closely monitored and uh, the country's neighbors will draw their own inferences and lessons from the Indian experience, as it were, and replicate that or learn from India's experience and uh, you know, use it in their own context. So there are many layers of uh, at, you know, interpretation and inference you can draw from this, uh, this very significant development. Right. So this is, of course, you know, going to have ramifications much beyond the Doklam Plateau. It now remains to be seen as to how China behaves on the South China front as well. And also, if I could come back to Mr. Madhav Nalapat. Uh, Mr. Nalapat, this is, you know, a very interesting development. Let's also stress yet again that this is a statement that has been put out by the Ministry of External Affairs. The Chinese side, for its part, has not opened its cards yet. And this is also a development that is coming up just ahead, a few days ahead of the BRICS summit in China. Do you think, you know, in many ways, China is, is going to look at India as a valuable ally. Can we, can we expect that sort of a change of direction in the way China conducts its diplomacy in subcontinent? Will we see China pull away from Pakistan and perhaps you know, lean more towards India? Could that happen? Well, I'd like to point out that in today's world, economic development is the most important. And in today's world, China and the United States are the largest trading partners of, of each other. Mm -hmm. India is a very significant, have a very large amount of Indian trade is with the United States and with China. Mm -hmm. So a conflict between any of these three countries, between any two of these three countries, would have global ramifications. It's very important for all three countries to basically avoid conflict. Now, we have, we have seen, for example, in China, Central Television has just now broadcast news of the MEA statement. And I think this is going to have a very salutary effect. The fact of the matter is that confronting India militarily is, is a very bad option for China. And looking at China as an enemy is a very bad option for India. But you have, unfortunately, hawks on both sides who are doing precisely that. The, the, the two countries have much to gain from each other. And it's my expectation that the two leaders, Prime Minister Modi and Xi Jinping, who in the past have shared a very warm personal relationship, that they will get together and ensure that there is what is called a win-win situation in which both sides benefit. This is a very welcome development from the point of view of stability in Asia and from the point of view of the Asian century, because closer cooperation between India and China is very important, as is close cooperation between China and the, uh, and, uh, and the U.S., and India and the U.S. It's very important we not go back into a past paradigm in which war was taken as an option. War should be completely taken off the table as an option in statecraft among the major powers. War should be taken off the table uh, in, in statecraft between the major powers is what you've said. And Surya, if I could come back to you on this, you know, there were just reports which came in that the Chinese expats of Oppo and Vivo were heading home on the back of low sales in the months of July and August because of the anti-Beijing sentiment which prevails in India after the Doklam standoff. Is this what has made China realize that, you know, it could be the manufacturing giant of the world, but if it were to lose key markets, then its, its economy is going to be hurt in more ways than what any military victory could actually achieve for it. Is this the realization 
that has made China back off? I think that realization has always been there. The business of China is business and they're doing it uh, exceptionally well all over the world. Mm -hmm. uh, do understand that this is also a period when the world economy is not doing well. Mm -hmm. The Chinese economy exports especially have fallen and the Chinese need to ensure that the economy builds up. Uh, there's uh, uh, more people of their own people buy their own goods. Mm -hmm. uh, they need to keep the economy moving. And for that reason, when they see uh, investments, Chinese investments in India coming under pressure because of something happening on, uh, on the plateau of a third country, then it becomes an issue. I mean, they are pragmatic people. They understand these issues very well. They dealt with them on a far larger scale with the U.S. So what we are seeing today is a realization, I think, by both sides mm -hmm. that this kind of confrontation doesn't help. And um, China has been over the top, uh, frankly, in terms of how the foreign ministry has reacted to India. Mm -hmm. There's been a lot of uh, name calling from the Chinese side, um, intemperate language. Mm -hmm. uh, they have been, um, uh, frankly, rude. And um, they've uh, also fueled the ire of uh, Global Times, uh, their own state-owned media. Mm -hmm. uh, frankly, I think, <laughs> and there have been some unseemly incidents on the Pangong So Lake only last week. Mm -hmm. I think uh, there was an understanding that uh, this uh, uh, standoff has gone off far enough. Mm -hmm. uh, enough has been said and now let's try and get things over. Remember that there is a BRICS summit due in uh, China in the next uh, few days. And uh, until now there has been no word from the Indian Foreign Ministry whether Prime Minister Modi will attend. Mm -hmm. So for the Chinese it's a prestige issue also. Mm -hmm. They need all the members of BRICS, all the, it's a summit level meeting of all uh, heads of state. They need the Indian Prime Minister there. And a very bad signal will go if it doesn't turn up. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, uh, the uh, uh, agreement, if I, I presume it's an agreement to end the disengagement, to, mm -hmm. end, to end the standoff, uh, in that sense it is timely. Absolutely. And also, you know, if I could go to Ramesh on this. Ramesh, do you think China was increasingly getting isolated after the Doklam standoff? Um, you know, there were sources who were saying that America is likely to back India in the Doklam standoff. Russia was non-committal and also in terms of the developments that were happening along the South China Sea. You know, increasingly China was under pressure from the United States where Donald Trump appears to be taking a hard line uh, in terms of his relationship with China. Is the increasing world isolation, is this what has made China, you know, resort to this, this sort of an agreement where it is now trying to face, uh, save a bit of its face for itself? Clearly, uh, Mohammed, China's so-called peaceful rise has been uh, called into question mm -hmm. by its actions both on its uh, maritime boundary front with countries in its neighborhood in the South China Sea and also on the land boundary front vis-a-vis -vis India. So clearly, there are many lessons to be learned for China as well from this uh, very, uh, you know, a, a misadventure, if I can put, call it that way, of trying to change the status quo unilaterally on the Doklam mm -hmm. plateau. Remember, Doklam is Bhutanese territory which China claims as its own and uh, the attempts being made to change the status quo have been clearly been, you know, India's call, China's bluff, uh, as it were, on the Doklam, uh, on the on the situation. And to my mind, I mean, Surya was referring to the BRICS summit, and I was thinking to myself, did Prime Minister Modi and his government make its participation at the summit contingent upon an early right. resolution of the Doklam plateau? Well, we'll know in the fullness of time, right. but speculations are doing the rounds as to why and how this disengagement uh, ca you know, came about in the first place. Absolutely, Ramesh. Do continue to stay on with us. Meanwhile, I'm told that we're also joined by Mr. M.K. Bhadrakumar, who is a former diplomat. Uh, Mr. Bhadrakumar, how do you view this development? Is China in the habit of ever pulling back from its stated position? Or is it the reality of the situation in the subcontinent which is slowly perhaps beginning to dawn in China? You see, you know, <laughs> this is a free world and we all can speculate. But mm -hmm. I would like to go by precisely by what the MEA has stated. Uh -huh. Now, in terms of the MEA statement, you know, as you can see, there is no pullout mentioned anywhere. Mm -hmm. And the word is very carefully used and the word used is disengagement. Right. That is number one. Uh -huh. And uh, secondly, it also... Now, when they say disengagement of troops, it is pulling back from the no, position no, no, that no, they no, were no, earlier? No, don't, don't rush into conclusion. That's okay. what I'm saying. It's a free world. You're free to speculate. Right. But I'm not free to speculate. No, but what does disengagement of troops mean? No, no. I have a professional background, so I'm not free to speculate. I'm not a media person. Okay. And I would like to therefore be very precise. No, that is the I'm reason saying. why if you could perhaps enlighten us what would disengagement of uh, here yes. would mean. 
disengagement means you know a certain kind of a situation arose there uh -huh. and that is you know we have a denouement there that is what it is the disengagement means sorry could you could you repeat that again now now there has been a certain situation there uh -huh. and that situation uh, both sides are disengaging from that situation that is what it implies okay now um, uh, in the preceding paragraph there are two paragraphs in the statement in the preceding paragraph it mentions that this is through diplomatic communication. Mm -hmm. This uh, process has been achieved. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, in the diplomatic communications, you know, we were able to express our views and convey our concerns and interests. Mm -hmm. And one would like to imagine that we were uh, able to convince the Chinese. Mm -hmm. Now, this is the government of India's version. Mm -hmm. And according to the government of India version, uh, this is a mutual agreement. And, uh, you know, there is no thing like, you know, anyone calling anyone's bluff or anything of the sort, which I have been, I just heard on your television channel. Right. And on the basis of that, the, uh, the, uh, the disengagement has taken place, has been agreed to. Mm -hmm. Now, when you say agreed to means, you know, that both sides are party to it. Right. And that has already begun. You know, it's if I could ongoing. just read out that specific line in question here, if we can try get that agreement, uh, the statement or MEA statement on our screens as well. You know, it says expeditious disengagement of border personnel at the face off site at Doklam has been agreed to and is ongoing. This Absolutely. is what is said disengagement Absolutely. of border personnel at the face off site. So, Absolutely. you know, one is free to interpret it in any way, but it does look like. A calling of a de-escalation intentions. That is to say, you know, troops may be there, maybe they could pull back, but they are not going to engage themselves militarily. Now, how do we, how do we, is, is how that, do we know? Is our how understanding do we know what all are involved in that? You mm -hmm. know, <laughs> in the sense that there is a Chinese version which says that you know, since the end of July, there are only 40 guys from the Indian side there, mm -hmm. and it is quite possible, you know, that there are structures there. Mm -hmm. So you know, disengagement means a lot of things. Right. And, you know, I'm very sure that, you know, that the 40 people can't be just sitting there in a standalone way. Mm -hmm. You know, there must be some backup, logistical backup, and some structures might have been put up. You mm -hmm. know, various kinds of things come up, you know. Okay. And that is why, you know, the word has been, wording has been very careful. It says about disengagement. The because wording is very careful. It has a very strong political connotation, mm -hmm. which is this, that we do not want to, neither side wants to proceed on a track, which may lead to a conflagration. Okay. So they are disengaging from that, you know. So okay. that, is, that is what the word is implying. And it doesn't say anything about, uh, you know, right. how the thought... You know, right, is right, right Mr. Bhadrakwar, we've got your point. You've been extra cautious yeah. being a former diplomat. But my colleague Ramesh would like to ask you a question. Go ahead, Ramesh. Ambassador Bhadra Kumar, I was listening intently to your uh, intervention there. I just want to ask you one very simple question. Why do you think or what do you make of the fact that this statement was issued by the Indian Foreign Ministry even as we are waiting for the Chinese side to make an official comment, what do you make of this uh, this development? No, this is definitely this is a mutually agreed uh, thing. This development which is there, and I have no reason to believe that the Chinese are not party to it. If they have not put out a statement, that must be because of their procedural aspects on their side. It's quite it's quite clear. It is it is not as if Indians are trying to jump the gun. You know, uh, it, our statement, and I would like to really believe 100% what our MEA says, that, you know, that it has been agreed to and is ongoing. It's taking place on the ground. So let the Chinese come out with their statement whenever they like. What's our problem? Right. So it is the expeditious disengagement of border personnel at the face-off site. This is, you know, a statement that is open for interpretations. But Mr. Bhadra Kumar, who is a former diplomat, says that we need to be a little more cautious in, in terms of how this statement is, is actually interpreted. Now, let me take this to, to our senior editor on the international desk, Surya Gangadharan. Surya, would you, you know, say disengagement is not de-escalation, disengagement is not pulling back of troops, disengagement is not, you know, the troops could still be there, they may not fire. How, how do you read this? Well, if my, um, uh, from what Ambassador Bhadra Kumar is saying, uh, I would presume that both sides have now agreed to pull back their troops maybe not and completely from that area mm -hmm. but certainly from their eyeball to eyeball kind of situation that exists as of now mm -hmm. and uh, that's a good sign uh, it doesn't mean that indian troops who are uh, positioned in bhutan i believe in ha uh, are uh, going to withdraw i think uh, this is solely in terms of the current standoff in the doklam plateau mm -hmm. and um, 
I think uh, one presumes that uh, again negotiations will resume at some point mm -hmm. um, over the disputed uh, ownership of that uh, territory, right. so, which is good. Mm -hmm. And uh, the very fact that both sides are pulling off is again a good sign. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure the Chinese um, will forgive or forget uh, what um, India has done. Uh, but that's something we can uh, discuss much later and we don't even know if uh, uh, this is something that um, the Chinese have obviously thought through. Uh, they have obviously been uh, discussing with the Indian side. There's been right. considerable back and forth. Mm -hmm. And in that sense, what's happened today is a good development. Absolutely, indeed. It's a good development. And, you know, the line that's been put out in the Ministry of External Affairs, this is what you've got on your screens. Expeditious disengagement of border personnel at the face-off site at Doklam has been agreed to and is ongoing. It's open to interpretation. Bhadra Kumar, Mr. Bhadra Kumar, who's a former diplomat, says we need to be very cautious. It may not mean de-escalation. It may not mean pulling back of troops. I'm also told we are joined by Mr. Nitin Gokhale, who is a strategic affairs expert. Mr. Gokhale, you know, at the time that this standoff began in the month of June, especially from the Chinese media, you know, which is state-run, we saw a lot of belligerents. Uh, Arun Jaitley also came out and made a statement saying that India of 2017 is not the India of 1962. Uh, do you think, you know, the fact that India did not buckle under the pressure has actually worked for India? Well, certainly, yes. Uh, India's uh, approach of being resolute on ground and reasonable in diplomacy uh, what the line that I have been using for almost two months now uh, has actually worked. Uh, and uh, I, in fact, uh, must tell you that uh, I was uh, in Beijing uh, from uh, mm -hmm. last Sunday to, uh, in fact, last night, uh, just almost eight days. And there were indications um, that uh, there was uh, the diplomats were burning the midnight oil on both sides uh, to arrive at uh, some kind of a resolution, uh, mainly because uh, the BRICS uh, summit was uh, upcoming. And uh, it was important for China as a host to have uh, the Indian Prime Minister arrive at Shem, uh, Shemen, uh, where the BRICS summit is being held from 3rd to 5th September. That's uh, the primary reason. But there are, of course, uh, other reasons uh, which uh, have been talked about uh, by different people. Uh, but uh, suffice it to say that uh, it's a good development, diplomacy at the end. But uh, I must caution uh, our uh, your viewers here and uh, also those who watch India and relations mm -hmm. that this is not uh, the, uh, the end of uh, the differences between India and China. Mm -hmm. uh, this, in my view, is a uh, temporary uh, truce, mm -hmm. and uh, unlikely uh, that it is unlikely that you know, China is going to forgive or forget in a hurry. It will try uh, similar uh, tactics in other places uh, where uh, it thinks uh, India is. Uh, weak on the ground. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, in my view, uh, going forward, both India and China need a, uh, not a new mechanism really, but uh, retweaking of the existing mechanisms uh, to uh, take the border negotiations forward. Because right. uh, the existing mechanisms have actually uh, run their course, is uh, what it seems uh, as of now. Uh, but it's too early to uh, really come to a final conclusion on this. Uh, too early to come to a final conclusion is, is, is what you are saying. You know, Surya, if I could come back to you on this, China does not forgive and forget very easily. This is clearly a snub. You know, one can be cautious of how the statement is read. Expeditious disengagement of border personnel at the face-off site at Doklam. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, China did not get what it wanted in Doklam. They were trying to build a road which was clearly meant for military logistics. And here they've been held back. It's a major snub. So how can we expect the Chinese to be reacting going henceforth? Uh, Nitin uh, gave indication of that. The Chinese will continue uh, probing and testing uh, India's resolve, India's strength. Mm -hmm. And don't forget, we have a very long line of actual control stretching all the way from Ladakh. Mm -hmm. down to Himachal, Nutrakhand, and then again uh, Sikkim, uh, Arunachal. So there's a lot of border over there, a lot of uh, right. weak areas, I'm sure, where India is uh, uh, not too uh, strong. Mm -hmm. And um, it could be a border standoff, perhaps it could be something else. I mean, uh, why should we presume that um, it should be a repeat of uh, Doklam kind of thing? It could right. be something entirely different, something which may have, maybe we have not calculated. So mm -hmm. um, we'll have to wait and see how the Chinese play this. Um, they are. Uh, they have suffered a setback. The world has seen how India has stood up for uh, a neighbor and a partner, and uh, this has implications for uh, China's policy, perhaps uh, going forward, whether in the South China Sea or elsewhere. 
mm -hmm. and uh, for the first time the Chinese have been stopped mm -hmm. uh, from uh, proceeding ahead with what they thought was their own um, okay. was their interest. Absolutely. And uh, obviously this has implications. We'll have to see going forward how it actually works out on the ground. Right.